playing. Marvel's The Falcon and the Winter Soldier debuted an action-packed trailer ahead of its series debut on Disney+, Plus, finally revealing the main conflict of the story. Villain Baron Zemo is back and more comic book accurate than ever, so we're going to break down his master plan and the new baddies helping him execute it. Plus, what would a trailer analysis video for a Phase 4 MCU property be without making a big deal about a possible X-Men Easter egg? Grab that remote and get ready to scrub frame by frame. It's time for Rewind Theater. Where do we start? Sam and Bucky will be battling a familiar face in this new series, with Daniel Brühl reprising his role as Helmet Zemo from Captain America's Civil War. But it's been a minute since we've seen him on screen. So to recap, Zemo was the leader of a Sokovian commando squad until his country was annihilated in Avengers Age of Ultron. Zemo lost his wife and children in the disaster, sparking an intense hatred of the Avengers. To get his revenge, Zemo hatched a plan so complicated that, to this day I cannot explain it, that nevertheless succeeded in fracturing the Avengers and shook the public's confidence in costumed heroes, leading to the Sokovia Accords. His plan complete, Zemo tried to end it all, but Black Panther stopped him so he could pay for his crimes. When we last saw Zemo at the end of Civil War, he was imprisoned by the UN, yet smugly pleased with his victory. Now it seems Zemo has escaped, he took some time to knit his signature purple mask from the comics, and he's using his new lease on life to pursue an even more nefarious goal. Superheroes cannot be allowed to exist. I have no intention to leave my work unfinished. Sounds like breaking the Avengers in two wasn't enough for him. Now he wants to put an end to superheroes altogether. But to do that, what deep, dark secret could he possibly unearth this time? We've got a theory. In the 2003 comic book, Truth, Red, White, and Black, the unsettling truth comes out that the US military tried to recreate the super soldier serum by testing it on a group of African American soldiers. A casting rumor has been going around that Supergirl actor Carl Lumbly will be playing Isaiah Bradley, one of the only survivors of the top secret program. Exposing that horrid secret and hoping it will cause our heroes to lose faith in the mantle of Captain America is totally something Zemo would do. It seems Zemo won't be the only threat facing our heroic duo. Sam and Bucky will have to battle a group of mass terrorists known as the Flag Smashers. The ringleader is a woman who appears to have super strength, or at least enough fighting skill to, well... Hello girl, kick your ass! In the comics, there's a villain named Flag Smasher whose anti-patriotic rhetoric made him the perfect foil for Captain America. It seems in the MCU, the idea of Flag Smasher has been expanded into a whole group of masked anarchist villains, and they're led by this woman, played by Aaron Kellyman, who was Enfys Nest in Solo, A Star Wars Story. Maybe she was also a part of the experimental super soldier program, which would explain her abilities and give her motivation to assault the would-be mantle holder of Captain America. There is a fan theory going around the internet that suggests she's actually Sin, the daughter of Red Skull in the comics, and while there's no real evidence backing that up, it's just the right kind of crazy that we had to mention it. A character that looks an awful lot like Captain America makes a quick appearance, but we don't see his face. Given that Steve Rogers is probably off playing bingo at a retirement home somewhere, it's safe to say it's not him. No, this is John Walker, the government-designated successor to Cap named U.S. Agent, played by actor Wyatt Russell. Even though Steve passed on his shield to Sam in Avengers Endgame, it seems the government has other ideas, and now Sam will have to fight to take on the mantle that is rightfully his, assuming he even wants it anymore. And finally, we have reason to believe that the Falcon and the Winter Soldier will set up a key X-Men setting in the MCU called Madripoor. 
this neon-soaked city skyline definitely gives us some strong Madripoor vibes. It's basically the Moss Eisley of the Marvel Universe, a wretched hive of scum and villainy where few heroes dare to tread. It also happens to be the frequent stomping ground of Wolverine. That in itself raises some interesting questions. Could Wolverine make his MCU debut in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier? We know Marvel Studios is still years away from releasing an X-Men movie, but that doesn't mean we might not see various X-Men elements show up ahead of a proper film, as is common with the MCU. WandaVision. <laughs> Excuse me. But what does Wolverine even have to do with the legacy of Captain America that this show is exploring? Quite a bit, actually. Not only do Wolverine and Cap have a long history in the comics, their origins can be traced back to the same place. In the comics, Wolverine is given the codename Weapon X, and it was later revealed that the X stands for 10, and he was the 10th super soldier in the Weapons Plus program. And guess who was number one? Captain Freakin' America. Who knows if that'll come into play or not, but at the very least, Sam and Bucky could bump into Logan at a bar, although we all know how that would turn out. Excuse me, I'm Eric Lynch. Charles Xavier. Go f*** yourself. That's everything we found in the new trailer for The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Let us know what you spotted in the comments. And for more from IGN, be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you like to watch.